February 15th, 2023. Dear Rachel and dear everybody listening, welcome to the first episode of my brand new audio diary. Quite frankly, I have been struggling to adapt to the human liminal space of human internet social media. This and other factors have caused interruptions to my workflow. So I'm going to focus on daily short-form content and postpone our other project, The Earth, for the time being. On July 2nd, 1970, at about 7.45 in the evening, not far from Ann Arbor, Michigan, A meteorologist named John Gall and a family of four all witnessed a strange display of luminous wisps of cloud dancing for some 15 or 20 minutes atop a thunderhead. Were they angels? Were they alien angels? Gall and Maurice Graves published an account of the fantastic event in the journal Nature. Quote, The column of cumulus cloud towered in the light of the setting sun, far above the dark mass below, which occasionally flickered with lightning. Thin lamellae of ciriform cloud began to form above the peak of the cumulus column and streamed off to the northeast in advance of the storm cloud. The cumulus column impinged on these lamellae as it boiled upward, causing the horizontal layers of thin cloud to become somewhat dome-shaped. And just above the peak of the storm cell, the cloud mass seemed to be undergoing changes in brightness, lasting for several seconds at a time. The sudden brightening effect began concurrently with lightning strokes in the main cloud mass, but continued after the lightning flash was over. It had the appearance of a ripple-like upward and outward spread of radiance from the region just west of the peak of the cumulus column, resembling a somewhat fan-like display of aurora borealis. Unquote. But this was not the first time such a strange aerial phenomenon was written about. In 1965, Bernard Vonnegut described how this effect is nearly identical to the electromagnetic effects on ice crystals in a supercooled cloud in the lab. Vonnegut wrote, If a supercooled cloud in a Schaefer cold box is seeded, either with dry ice or silver iodide, and illuminated with a beam of light, it can be observed that the ice crystals reflect the light like little mirrors. As the ice crystal platelets slowly fall, they all become oriented with their principal axes in the vertical direction, so that the light is reflected from their horizontal surfaces, and the cloud appears quite bright in the region where the light is reflected toward the observer. This phenomenon is apparently identical with the sun pillar and sun reflections sometimes observed in the atmosphere. If one performs the experiment of creating a strong electric field in the ice crystal cloud by the introduction of an electrically charged object such as an ebonite rod, it will be observed that the position where the cloud appears bright because of reflections from the ice crystals can be made to change and move about by changing the position of the electrified object. The electric field apparently causes this effect because it induces electrical dipoles in the ice crystals, giving rise to forces that tilt them. Unquote. So the answer is clear. But what if they were angels anyway? Given the role of parsimony, 
it is unlikely. However, if you were a being made of some luminous meteoric substance, then the entire game would be different. That's just an observation that the general listener may take as just a hypothetical. In any case, this phenomenon is called a crown flash. If you search YouTube for crown flash, you can find a number of videos of this heavenly display. As always, I hope you return home safely, Rachel. We miss you here. Love, Telesma Blue Orb. P.S. to my lovely non-Rachel listeners, please see the references in the episode description. Please also press the subscribe button for more of my personal diary. Telesma Blue Orb's Earth Love Diary, copyright 2023, by Telesma Blue Orb and Rachel Nelson. All rights reserved.